everyone. So you're here with Cody and this is block six of our quilt along. So let's take a look at which block is number six. It's going to be this little guy down here. So similar um, to block five and its shape and the amount of smaller blocks used to construct this nine patch style block, um, but quite simple. This quilt block is perfect if you want to make tons of them to put together and make like a baby quilt because it's very soft because it's very simple it only uses one color it's the only block that we're going to do that only uses the one color which is fabric a and it's very simple um, and it just has like a little checkerboard in the center and we're just using a large trapezoid and a small trapezoid to put together so this one should go together quite simply uh, quite simple and rather quick so let's take a closer look as always, remember, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment in the comment section below if you have any questions about any of the videos um, in this Quilt Along Block series. Um, I'll try my, I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible with an answer, um, un unless one of the other viewers answers your question before I do. And it's a great place so other people who may also have that same exact question, um, they can see the answer that was uh, given. So it'll make life easier for everybody. So let's get started with block number six. So here we are with block number six. And so I've, like in the previous block, I've already got my strips cut out, which are all cut at two and a half inches because all of these are using a two and a half inch section of the lazy angle ruler. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our four corner blocks which are just two and a half inch squares so i've got my strip and it's double layered so we're going to go and use our six and a half inch ruler and then just use the two and a half inch uh, section here to cut this two and a half inch square just like we've done previously so we've got two and four so here are our four pieces. Now we're going to go and cut the four background trapezoids. So I have a little bit left here and it's double layered. So we'll go to our lazy angle ruler and so we're going to use a two and a half inch section here. So let's see if that will work. It's perfect. So this will give, I hate wasting fabric. So this will give us two large trapezoids of our background fabric. And we'll cut into this strip here. And so one thing to always remember is whenever you start with um, a new strip or fabric, before you start cutting off of it, make sure you trim off the salvage here. Let's see. So we'll just, Trim that salvage off, and then I can cut off two more of the large trapezoids. All right, so four corners, four background trapezoids. While we're dealing with the background fabric, we do need to cut two um, squares for this. So there's two different ways to do this. You can either cut two strips of the background and fabric A, one and a half inches. Sew those strips together and then cut segments. Or what you, that's if you're gonna make multiple of these. Or what you can do if we're just making one block, we can cut two one and a half inch squares of the background and then two one and a half inch squares of fabric A. And that's what we're going to do. But I do want to um, let you know, especially if you're a beginner, um, you can cut a strip of say one and a half inch white and then one and a half inch background and sew that whole strip together, press it towards the dark side and then cut one and a half inch segments and then you'll have this one piece all together. But in this case, I've already got a one and a half inch strip. So I'm just going to cut one and a half inch pieces off of this because I only need two. So I've got those two. And then I'll come 
to a little scrap piece of fabric that I've got. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open it up and cut one layer at a time because it's a two and a half inch piece. So what I'm going to do is I need a three inch piece. And this is in the, um, the pattern on the blog as well. So I need a three inch piece. I'm going to cut in half. So give me a one and a half inch section. So I need a three inch piece that's a one and a half, that's one and a half inches wide. So basically three inches by one and a half inch rectangle, just like I've got here. So then I can cut that off, save that for another uh, date. And then I can come here, cut that off and that's just garbage. And so here I've got a one and a half inch by three inches. So now I can cut a one and a half inch square off of this, which is then going to leave another one and a half inch square. Kind of just cut it in half. So the last thing we need to cut are three Fabric A trapezoids. So here's a two and a half inch strip that is doubled. So now we're just going to cut small trapezoids from here. So line up with the two, the two and a half and the two and a half. And we're just going to cut. And then we can rotate the ruler. So remember we took it from here and rotate it this way and we'll be using this marking here. So we line it up with the two and a half inch at the top, line up with the sides and the bottom, and just cut. So now we've got all of our pieces. So we've got four trap small trapezoids from fabric A, four white squares for the corner, four large trapezoids uh, background, and then four one and a half inch squares, two background, two fabric A. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to set those aside and we'll bring these large trapezoids over. So here, we'll take the trapezoid and then we'll lay them out like this. And then we'll take our smaller trapezoids, our fabric A, and just like we've done in the past, we've created this same exact block before in the uh, block three, I think it is. Um, we created the same exact block just um, on a larger scale. That's exactly what we're doing here. Except, so, except something that's different is we are using nine blocks instead of just four. So we've got corner pieces and then we have a different block in the center. So I've got them all laid out and I'll go and pin them and then we'll run over to the sewing machine and sew these together. While we're going to the sewing machine, let's bring these over with us and we'll sew these together. So this is the orientation which you're going to lay them out so you can kind of see what it's going to create. So what we're going to do is just going to sew basically fabric A to a background piece and then fabric A to a background piece. That's all. So we'll sew those down while we're at it as well. So here we are at the sewing machine. So we'll sew these little squares down first. And we're just using the quarter inch foot, in this case the 97, but it, depending on what your machine you've got, you just want to make sure you're using a quarter inch foot. And of course, if you have a straight stitch plate, um, it's very, very helpful when piecing. So here we're coming to our trapezoid sewing. And just like we've done with all the other trapezoids, we want to make sure we start in that little corner there. Make sure we line up with the quarter inch edge on the foot. Keep our fabric all nice and lined up. So 
So now we've got everybody sewn together. We'll trim them. We'll press them. We'll take our pins out. And we're almost done. This is a super simple block. So let's go to the ironing board and um, we'll move on. So here we are at the ironing board. So we've got our little squares that we sewed together and then we've got our trapezoids that we've sewn together. So all we need to do is press all this out and then move to the cutting table. So again, as always, we're always gonna press to, towards the dark side. Use a little steam to press those seams nice and flat so they'll, so they'll lay nice and flat and not have any little excess hanging over from um, that fabric A. And same thing here. So here we're going to press towards fabric A. In this case, it's like that corally pink. So what we can do before we actually go back to the cutting table, because when we go back to the cutting table, we just need to lay out our fabrics at this point so we can line them up and start sewing them. But our center block needs to be sewn before we can go and do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to the sewing machine and sew this together. And so since we press them both towards the pink, that fabric A, all we need to do is rotate this one. And just like I emphasized in all the blocks, is so now here this seam's folded over to the left and this seam's folded over to the right because we did rotate one of them. So what we can do is when we sew them together, we want to take those seams and we want to make sure they lock into each other. So they lock nice and tight. So some people put a little, a little um, dab of like applique glue, a glue that will dry very quickly and hold the fabric together and not, and not show any residue. Or you can take a straight pin or just if you just have one, you can just hold it and then go and sew. But make sure you start from the edge here and this stays lined up. And of course, then make sure the end lines up nicely. All right, so I'm going to go to the sewing machine, sew this, and we'll come and press it. And the, this, I will press my seam open. Um, and then we'll meet at the um, cutting table. All right. Okay, here we're ready to basically lay out all of our pieces. So we've got all of this sewn. So I went and sewed this together. So that's all ready to go. So what we can do is we can go and trim all these little dog ears, just like we've done in the past on other blocks just to have, so we have a nice finished edge here. So we'll go and do that for all of these blocks here. And then, so now we can line up everything or orient everything. So we can have our different blocks here, put our corners in. I always like to lay out everything before I start ever sewing it together. I want to make sure that I sewed my pieces correctly. And make sure I get the look that I'm going for, which I do. So perfect. So now we're going to sew these three together, these three, and then these three. And so we have three separate strips that we'll press and then sew together. All right. So one thing I do like to do, so when I do take this block, especially if I'm just working on one, is so I have it all laid out. So then I will place each block over each other like this. So I can take it to the sewing machine. I know the order in which they're all going to need to be sewn together. So then I can sew these together, these together, and these together. But I'm able to walk over there with the full stack. So I don't have to, I won't get confused because I'm notorious for mixing up pieces or whatnot. And so something you can do if you're creating multiple of these same exact blocks, just say if you're putting like a baby quilt together or any type of quilt together and use the same blocks over and over again throughout the entire quilt, is you can do, you can have a whole stack of the white squares, a whole stack of this trapezoid in this position. So you can have, say, a dozen of these um, stacked in each individual stack. And then you can take like this group together 
and then you can sew all those together and then you can have a stack of these waiting and you can sew that to the end. So you can do create a whole, let's say a dozen of this row, a dozen of this row, a dozen of this row, press them all because they're all going to be done the same and then sew them all together. So you can do them in masses like that. That's definitely the best way to do it if you do multiple. Uh, but we're here with us, we're just do, creating one block. So we're just kind of taking it one block at a time. All right, so I will go sew this and I will meet you at the uh, ironing board. So here we are. I sewed my pieces together, so I've got my three rows. Now we just need to press them. So here, like we've done, like we did in block five, we're gonna press these two outward, these two inward, and then these two outward. And that's so they're all interlock. So we'll just quickly do that. So I've got them pressed to the right, this one to the left. And we'll do the same thing for this one up here. So we can press that seam this way and press the seam that way. So those are out. This one, they're gonna to need to be in. So you can flip it over and get a nice look at it. I always like to use steam. It helps the seam to lay so much flatter. All right, well, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So now we just need to sew the top to the center and the bottom to the center. And then again, we'll press them. I like to press those seams open. And then we'll be good to go. And that'll be our finished block. So we'll go sew those together. And then we'll come back here and press them out. So here at the sewing machine, so we're going to sew these together, just like you see here. So we'll flip it over. And of course, we want to line up those interlocking seams. Line them up nicely here. And you can use a pin or you can use a binding clip. I do love the little binding clips. So you can kind of just clip it there because sometimes pins aren't always the best for everything so we'll line that seam up there and we can pin that and these binding clips hold things so wonderful so let's make sure my edges are all lined up and my corner And so when I get to this intersection, you can use your little stiletto and just hold it to make sure it stays in place. And when it gets there, it should be good. And the same thing when you get to the second one. So I like to stitch as close as possible. Take my little binding clip off. You can always do a double check to make sure. There we are. And use the stiletto to hold it in place. The stiletto is wonderful. Remember to use it. So we'll open up this. You can see how the points line up beautifully. So now we can go and add the bottom section. And we'll do it the same exact way. So we'll line up our seams here. Put a little binding clip. And we'll come here, lap those seams, and put a binding clip there. They're very helpful, especially when you have multiple seams, you have to line up for a quilt or a quilt block. All right, so we've got everything lined up. Use our little stiletto to get it in place. And what's also nice is sometimes these, um, these uh, seams, these folds, want to flap up or move in a, a different direction. So with the stiletto, you can always have it right there and keep it down, keep it in place while you're sewing it. So 
So this is it. See, it's perfectly lined up. It's exactly what we're going for. This binding clips and the stiletto really make a big difference. So that's it. So now all you have to do is go to the ironing board. And like I said, I'll, you can press those seams to one direction, but here I do like to press them open. It just makes the block lay so much flatter. Otherwise, that's it. It's a very quick and easy block. So you can easily put a whole quilt together just by making a whole bunch of these. You can make them all different colors. You can make it all, make it as fun as you want to make it. So hopefully you enjoyed making block number six in our lazy angle uh, star or a lazy star quilt along that we're working with here. Um, and remember, if you enjoy the videos, you enjoy the blocks, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And now remember, once the videos have been posted for each block on my blog, they ha I have the patterns all written up with tons and tons of pictures. Um, for each block so you can have those and so you can watch the video as, as many times you want um, but if you wanted something um, that isn't a video more of a written down pattern um, it's all on there all right so stay tuned for next week's block and as always happy sewing <laughs>